Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul, and we are continuing the build of the AMTM Beechcraft Starship. And we're looking at the outermost wing panel on the left side. We've started building that, and I want to take a moment to talk to you about some important things. First of all, the layout and set up in terms of uh, preparing to, to build this is exactly like that of the canard. We're using our uh, wing rib template that you see here. Just the slots are a little different, and the way you can tell the slots are different is you can look at your tabs here. Notice how much thicker your tabs are compared to the slots that are set up for the canard. So that's how you can differentiate it. Now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind to prep before you start is, of course, once again, just like the canard, make sure you angle the slots that are going to hold the spars. As you can see here, they've got to be angled, okay? Make sure that you also angle the trailing edge of the outermost wing panel and the leading edge of what will be the aileron. And what I mean is angle the slots here as well, okay, in this actual piece. Uh, don't forget to add your w, your WC-17. That's what the server's going to mount to. And don't worry about the gap here. We need that gap. When we go to insert our webbing, that webbing's going to slide in that gap right there. But do try to make sure that you have a minimal gap here between the trailing edge of the uh, outermost wing panel and the edge of WC-17. Now, let's talk about the most important... Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. Make sure all your ribs are at 90 degrees. Very important. Once again, these wonderful little devices I have here I got from RadicalRC.com. RadicalRC.com sells them. They're wonderful. They're right angle up brackets. Anyway, very important. Now, let's talk about the outermost rib here. And the, the, there's a, a bunch of things that, to keep in mind. First and foremost, before you do any gluing, we need to go through and we need to add... The wonderful blind nuts you can see there. And we've got some blind nuts uh, uh, right there, as you can see. And I'll show you a picture uh, in the manual in just a second. Uh, those blind nuts are important. They are going to hold the rudder, uh, the vertical stabilizer, pardon me, vertical stabilizers in place. Uh, they are detachable for transportation and storage. Uh, and they have to be mounted. Now, you'll, you'll need to get some scrap plywood and you're going to cut a piece to match the shape of the of the wing rib and you're going to drill out a hole now uh there in the instructions it says three millimeters uh for the screw however the blind nut i had was was a three millimeter blind nut but the actual prongs of the blind nut and the surface area was much larger it went past the actual thickness of the rib itself so therefore uh, what I did is I switched over to a 632nd. These blind nuts are from Great Plains. Great Plains obviously doesn't make hardware anymore, so I lucked out, but you might still be able to find them on eBay. The surface area here of this portion was much smaller, so therefore it fit perfectly in terms of the thickness of the rib, both in the front, uh, both in the rear, and of course in the front up there as well. Now that's one thing. So those are th that is completed before you glue the rib. I used a little uh, Gorilla glue, glue to hold these in place. Don't forget to glue the blind nuts in place, because otherwise they will strip. When uh, the, the prongs will strip and simply cut a, a little gash in the actual wing rib, or any surface for that matter, if you don't go through and glue them in place. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, you can see we've got these wonderful brackets here. Let me pan, let me uh, zoom back a little bit. Um, oh, okay, so um, notice the angle. The angle of this rib is six degrees inward. Now, you do get WC-18. That's included in the kit. However, and I discovered this a second ago, take a moment to cut a second WC-18 out of scrap and make it very precise, extremely important. What I found is that when I had put WC-18 in the front to measure the inward angle, the angle of the rear portion of the rib was not correct at all. It was off by about a degree or two. And you might say, well, what's a degree or two? Folks, in a canard, it really affects how it flies. Whether it is the angle of the canard, whether it is the angle of, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, vertical stabilizers, the incidence of the wing, you would not believe how much of a negative impact it has on the plane's ability to fly. So with that in mind, Cut two, simply just put a pin in in the board to hold them in place, as you can see, as we did here, okay? 
and then go ahead and then you'll be able to glue your rib in place. Now, one last thing, let me, let me stand up on this one. If you look down at the rib compared to the others, notice how it's angled inward a little bit. There's two degrees angled inward. Now that is built into the board, but do make sure, look at the tabs once again right here, make sure that the front tab and the rear tab are sitting flush. That way you're guaranteed to get an exact two degrees inward. Once you have that set, then you'll be able to glue the spar. Now, one very important tip. Because this rib is angled inward more, you're going to need to enlarge the slot here further forward than what it already is in order to compensate for that angle inward. Okay, that'll make more sense when you do it, but you can look at it there. You can see how it is a much larger gap here or slot. And do that on the bottom as well. Don't forget the bottom slot. Do the same thing. Make that uh, uh, much larger. Outside of that, gone together very well. And of course, make sure your inboard rib is exactly 90 degrees. Okay, that's absolutely critical because it is going to be glued to the midsection, as you can see here. Okay, so do keep that in mind. Also, when you go to glue your leading edge of your aileron in place, be careful. Much like the canard, we don't want it glued to the trailing edge of the actual outer wing panel, okay? That's got, because we're gonna separate this and make our aileron in the same way we made our elevators for the canard. And let me shoot you a quick picture of WC6 so you can see what I'm talking about with the blind nuts, just to give you a better idea. And you can see the extra pieces right there of the ply. Now, one last tip, they do not include any hardware at all, except for control horns. Uh, you'll have to get your own hardware but, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, blind nuts aren't that expensive. All right, friends. So um, real quick, by the way, we are using six 30-second screws in case I forget to, uh, failed to mention that instead of the, the three millimeter as recommended. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update, you can see we've gone ahead and we have our added our leading edge. We've added our webbing between the spars, two millimeter uh, uh, balsam. Uh, we also have, uh, of course, um, our, our sub rib. Now, the sub rib right here is very important. That forms the end of the aileron here. And you want to make sure that that is sitting nice and flat. This is up just a little bit, so we'll have to fix that. Uh, but we'll fix that with the sheeting. Um, outside of that, uh, basically all we need to do is go ahead and, and shape the leading edge of the aileron, the trailing edge of the wing panel, and the leading edge of the actual wing panel itself. Now, the nice thing about this leading edge, it actually comes pre-cut which makes things a lot easier. It's much simpler than the one that comes with the actual um, other wing panels, the uh, middle and the inboard wing panels. All right, friends, let's get those parts shaped. More to come. All right, friends, we're starting to work on the right outer wing panel, and I want to take a moment just to uh, uh, reiterate WC6. Uh, remember, as you're going through and you're preparing the, uh, the ribs uh, for gluing, uh, make sure to go ahead and put a, a little extra scrap plywood, as you can see here, on the both pre of the pre-drilled holes, and then you'll need to drill with an 11 30 second, uh, or 11 16 excuse me, um, because we're using 6 30 second blind nuts, uh, and that's important. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that on the spar slot, both the top and the bottom, that you wanna go through, and uh, the front edge here and here, you're gonna need to sand it forward. Don't forget to sand it at an angle, okay? Sand it at an angle. Uh, but you're going to need to go ahead and, and bring it forward so that way the uh, the edge of both the top and bottom slots lines up with the actual tab itself, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, once again, we're looking at the right outer wing panel. We've gone ahead. We've got all our ribs in place. We've got our leading edge of our aileron, our trailing edge of our right outer, outer wing panel, We've gone ahead and have, we have our top and bottom spar. We've got our servo plate in place. And finally, we've got our, um, our leading edge in place as well. And of course, our blind nuts and everything for the outer rib. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to shape our leading and trailing edges here and our leading and trailing edge here, our, our leading edge here as well. And uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll begin the process of putting the top sheeting in place. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, just one quick thing I forgot to mention. Don't forget to add your webbing between the spars, all the spars, okay? Uh, two millimeter balsa is what you're using. I just wanted to point that out to you. More to come.
All right, friends, you can see we've got our right outer wing panel sheeted. We're going to do our left wing panel in just a second. Uh, a couple quick tips on the uh, when you're sheeting the outer panels. Uh, the same techniques we used for the center section we used here, but we used CA to hold the sheeting in place. It's a little smaller, a little easier uh, to, 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 to glue when you have something like this as opposed to the larger uh, center section that you can see right there. Now, a couple tips on gluing your outer wing panels. First, start off with your leading edge, okay? Uh, hold it, get it taped down with our blue tape like we did on our center section. And then at, once you've got that in place, go ahead and run some CA behind, behind the actual um, uh, leading edge. And then of course, don't forget to put a little bit on the front as well along, along the uh, leading edge. Uh, because this is a very thick piece and you want to make sure that you've got uh, ample CA holding the uh, sheeting in place on the leading edge. Then once you've done that, go ahead and work your way along the ribs, along your spars. And then when you get back to this section, remember now this area here is going to become your aileron. So be careful not to glue your leading edge of your aileron to your trailing edge of the outer wing panel. Just very, very small amounts in here. You can always go back and put larger amounts once you've gone ahead and separated the aileron from the outer wing panel. All right, friends, let's shift our focus to sheeting the left side. More to come. All right, friends, you can see we have our outer wing panels fully sheeted. We also have our uh, outlines for the ailerons drawn on there. And I'll have uh, some more information in just a second how to go about doing that. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, uh, one of the things that we have to do with this particular plane is to go through and to be able to separate the uh, what will eventually become the ailerons from the actual flying surface itself. Now, as I mentioned before, this portion here is the, uh, is the leading edge of the aileron, as you can see right here, and then this portion is the trailing edge of the surface. Now, one of the easiest ways in preparation prior to putting the bottom sheeting on to prepare the surface for cutting away uh, the aileron is to take a straight edge, pass it between the uh, leading edge of the aileron and the trailing edge of the surface, and do that in between the pieces along the entire length of the actual uh, uh, surface. Now, in this case, we're talking about the outboard wing panel. Once you've gone ahead and you've done that, then what you'll have, and you can see it here, if you look carefully, there's the blade sticking up. What you'll have is you'll have very tiny marks, and you can see them there. There's a, a mark right here, there's a mark here, there's a mark here. You just connect those marks with a nice straight edge going all the way across, as you can see here, and then go ahead and uh, and also, don't forget to draw the line where the outboard portion of the aileron is going to exist. That way, when you go through and you put your bottom sheeting on, all you'll need to do at that point is simply go through. You'll take a razor. Usually, it's something a fine tooth is best. You'll simply insert it into the actual slots and be able to make a perfect cut without uh, 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 damaging the uh, the trailing edge of the outboard wing panel or the leading edge of the aileron. All right? All right, friends. More to come. All right, friends. We've got our midsections here. Time to sheet them. Now, we don't have to worry about cutting out any control services. The midsections do not have any control services on there at all. So let's go ahead using our 1.5 millimeter balsa. Let's get them sheeted. All right, friends, the top portion of the middle wing section has been fully sheeted. And they look absolutely fantastic. We're now going to go ahead and take the outer wing panels, glue them to the middle wing panels, and more to come. All right, friends, we're getting ready to go ahead and add some webbing behind each of these, uh, uh, behind the spars, between each of the ribs. I want to provide a quick clarification, page 29 of the manual, uh, right here on that portion where it says blue reinforcements. WB11 behind main rib. They just mean just to go ahead and put the webbing in place. That's all they're talking about there. It might, might seem a bit confusing. And we're going to use two millimeter balsa. And as I said before, behind the spars, between each rib. More to come. All right, friends, you can see we've got our webbing in place on both our wings here. 
and it just looks fantastic. Came out really well. Very nice. One little tip when you're going through and putting the webbing on this particular part of the of the uh, of the middle wing, you'll need to notch it a little bit for the wing attachment block just so you know. All right, we're going to go ahead. Uh we're going to begin the process now of attaching our outer wing panels to our middle wing panels. More to come. All right, friends, we're getting ready to join the wing halves together. I want to take a moment just to show you a couple things. It's not quite as straightforward as it might seem. So just some important tips when you go about doing it. And first of all, we're looking at page 29 here. You can see the directions as they're listed here with regards to uh, joining the actual uh, wing halves together on the outer panel with the mid panel. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about a couple things. So first of all, the kit includes this rake and it's listed as WB18 in the manual. That's incorrect. It should be WB13. I've notified the manufacturer. Now you'll notice there's two round holes and an oval hole. The oval hole is for passing the um, control lead for the aileron servos through. The round holes are for the dowels. Now you'll notice uh, as we t when we take this particular piece and we go through and we and we put it with the uh, the outer wing panel you can see how the holes are just a little bit bigger than the actual dowels and that's so that way you can adjust it accordingly because if you look at the front leading edge portion you're, you're trying to get it when the wing halves are joined together so that this is sitting level like that with the actual wing that's the important piece right there okay now the other thing to keep in mind too is that when you join the halves together not only are you going through and um, uh, adding this rake but you need to make sure that when the halves are together that the leading edge is in fact uh, level and uh, 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 I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit but for right now here's what here's a dry fit of the right wing with the rake in the center the rake is important it's not optional uh, rakes for those that don't know are put on certain aircraft that have swept wings uh, because it, it helps to direct airflow uh, in, in, uh, in such a way. I, as someone who's more familiar with aerodynamics could, could, uh, could better explain it. But nonetheless, make sure you include it. Make sure that it's in there as well. Now, one thing that the book tells you is that the building tabs here on the bottom uh, do not, aren't supposed to be removed until after you've joined the halves together. Well, um, um, the halves together. So here's the problem with that. When you go and you put this rake in place and you join the halves together, okay, you can see that the rake is, if you look very closely towards the bottom down here, let me turn this over actually for a better view. You can see that with the rake being in place, it's going to make it somewhat difficult to remove the tabs. So because and plus, if any epoxy squeezes out in between, um, um, you, you're, it's going to wind up gluing the actual tabs to the actual rake, and you don't want that. That that's not good. So with that, you want to make sure that you remove the tabs before you attach the rake. And you can see there really isn't any need for these tabs to be in place when you attach the halves, because you can see how, according to the picture here, there the wings are, 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 are glued together upside down. And when we look at the next page, you're, you're supposed to go ahead and remove the, um, uh, the support struts or the building tabs, as we call them, uh, uh, from the actual ribs anyway. So I would recommend go ahead, remove them before you join the halves uh, together. That, that's an important piece. Anyway, let's go ahead, let's get our halves together, and more to come. All right, friends, uh, you can see we've got our right wing halves glued together. We used 30-minute uh, epoxy. Make sure you get lots of clamps. And a uh, couple other quick tips is uh, make sure that you're only putting epoxy on the actual wing halves themselves. Don't put it on the actual rake because you don't want to accidentally cover the entire rake in epoxy when it does not need to be covered entirely in epoxy. Last tip is look at the leading edge, particularly the area where the sheeting is located, and you'll notice how for the most part it, it really is quite level, as you can tell right there how even it is. That, that's extremely important because uh, you want to make sure that you don't have any unnecessary twisting in the wing, which could affect, affect the uh, flight characteristics. All right, friends. More to come.
All right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see we've got our outer wing panel joined with our mid wing panel. We're looking at the left side here, and you can see the right side over there. And they both came out just absolutely fantastic. Very happy with the results. Now, I want to make you aware of one very important mistake that I made. As you know, this is the outline for the aileron. And the mistake I made is I accidentally glued this outer rib here on the outer wing panel to the rake itself. And let me flip this over and show you what I'm talking about. Now, let me just preface this by saying it was not in the instruction manual uh, 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 to keep an eye out or for that or not do that, if you will, which obviously common sense would dictate I should have, shouldn't have done that. But nonetheless, here is a simple fix that I recommend to anyone who's building this plane, and I've made the manufacturer aware of this. Before you glue the outer wing panel to the rake and the, mid, and the middle wing panel, take a moment and um, sheet the aileron only. Here's your leading edge of your aileron, okay? Sheet the aileron only, cut it away, okay? Then go ahead and glue the outer wing panel to the rake and the mid wing, okay? That's the important thing to do because what that does, that prevents you from doing what I did, which is I glued this part of the rib here, which would have been part of the aileron, to the rake itself. And by the time I realized it was too late, the epoxy had, had already dried. The fix I'm going to use is I'm going to go ahead and make the cut. I'm going to leave this rib in place against the rake. I'm going to make the cut right here along the actual skin and, of course, work to cut this away as well. Uh, from the actual rib. And I'm then going to go ahead and sheet the aileron, and then I'm just going to add a little end, end cap of rib here on the end of the aileron itself. Now, we're almost done. What we have to do next is we're going to be putting in just a little bit of extra wood here and here, much like we did for the canard, to go ahead and provide extra support for the hinges. And we're going to be doing that behind the leading edge of the aileron and behind the trailing edge of the outer wing panel. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and pass through our aileron servo lead, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the final sheeting of the mid wing and the outer wing panel. And then for the most part, we'll be done. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, a couple friendly tips for you when, when it comes to sheeting the middle wing section. First thing you're gonna do is take a single sheet of 1.5 millimeter balsa and use a single sheet rather than gluing multiple sheets together. I'm finding it's easier to use a single sheet when completing this task. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut an angle in the sheet so it matches this part of the wing and you know your angle is cut correctly when this part of the sheeting lines up with the leading edge. Once you have the angle cut correctly, go ahead and tape the sheeting in place so it's even with the leading edge. Then go ahead and make a couple marks, as you can see here, along the ribs. And then after you've done that, take the sheet, flip it down, run thick CA over each of the ribs and the spars only. Don't do the leading edge, okay? Once you've gone ahead and you've run the thick CA, then take the sheeting, flip it back in place, hold it until it's dry. Then once that's done, go ahead and take your, uh, your wing, lift it up, and run CA here where the sheeting meets the leading edge. That's the quickest and easiest way to go about doing this. A band saw, by the way, will be very helpful, or if you have some type of, of tabletop circular saw uh, with an angle available, that'll help a great deal when it comes to cutting the angle in the sheets. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see the bottom mid-left wing panel has been fully sheeted, and she looks great, no problems whatsoever. We're now going to shift our focus over to the bottom left outer panel. But before we can sheet it, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to put in some hard points. So you can see we've got WC16 here, 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 and here. And these hard points are, are what are going to be used to hold the hinges in place. So whether you're using CA hinges or pin hinges or Robart uh, uh, hinge point hinges, whatever it might be, you want to make sure these are installed and try to keep them roughly about in the center of each of the bays between the ribs. Now, let's talk about WC-13. Now, I haven't glued that in just yet. And WC-13, what that is, that, that's a hard point here that the control horn will attach to. 
and it's it's uh it's eight millimeter balsa as is the other hard points by the way we want to make sure that you're shaping it in accordance with the shape of the actual rib itself and you can see it from the side so do keep that in mind uh, and then once that's in, once you're done shaping it, uh, just double check it. And then of course you'll go ahead and glue it in place. So with that, we're going to glue that in place. We're going to put our sheeting on and then basically this panel is done. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see we've gone ahead. We have our bottom right outer panel fully sheeted. We've also gone ahead and cut out our opening for our servo, and we've even taken the time to cut away our aileron. And the sheeting just came out great. Looks fantastic. Uh, you can also see here, let me zoom in a little bit. You can also see our, our rib piece that I went ahead and I um, um, accidentally glued in place along the rake. And what we're gonna do to rectify that is, mentioned, as mentioned previously, we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to hold this up against, hold the aileron up against a uh, scrap piece of ply. We're gonna trace it, cut out a, a rib, and sand it and fit and sandwich it between the two pieces of sheeting. And then that'll give us our aileron. So no big deal, just a minor fix. Uh, so we're almost done. A couple of other small things we need to do uh, with the wing, and I'll show you those in just a little bit. One friendly tip, folks, very important, very important. Now, don't forget, you do have these uh, the blind nuts that are in here, and when you're putting on your bottom sheeting, be careful when putting on your glue. You do not want a single drop getting inside these blind nuts. Otherwise, you're, you're just going to have a real headache that you're going to have to deal with. So when you go to put glue on this outer rib, take the wing itself, flip it upside or right side up, excuse me, and then just run glue along the where the sheeting meets the rib, and that'll guarantee that that none none of the glue gets into the blind nut. When I'm talking about the glue, I'm talking about thin CA. Okay, thin CA. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update, you can see the wing just looks fantastic, and she's basically done. And I just want to say to you, you know, I've been building for 44 years, and this is hands down probably the best kit I've ever built. So do take the time, click on the description below, and go ahead and visit the manufacturer and get yourself one. You won't be disappointed. And I'm not getting paid for this, folks. I just like to pass along uh, great manufacturers who make great kits. Now, friendly tips I want to pass along to you with regards to the wing, and that has to do with the transitions, uh, in this case, from the outer wing panel to the midsection here. And you want to make sure that you get a nice blend right in here. Okay, that's important. So you have to do a little additional sanding here. And a recommendation I would have would be to take the rake, uh, when you go to put the wing heads get together, slide the rake all the way forward. It's going to extend a little bit past the leading edge. That's okay. You can sand it to shape and it'll blend this part of the wing very nicely. Now, another place of transition is going from the, uh, from the midsection to the center section. And you can see how it sticks out a little bit, but that's not a problem. We'll do some sanding, probably a little ball also filling right in here to help get that to uh, to transition better. Friendly tip, and I forgot to do this, make sure you leave the last uh, inch or two unshaped, okay, as much as you can. The same holds for the midsection here, okay, um, midwing, uh, and what you can do is when you bring the halves together like I've done here, okay, that's a perfect opportunity then to blend these two wings together, and you want to do that on both sides. All right, and let's take a look at the ailerons real quick. As I mentioned a second ago, we wanted, was going to use scrap ply, which we did to go ahead and fill in the end caps on both of the ailerons, and that came out really well. Nothing fancy or special there. Okay, so we got to do just a couple other things besides the transition, some small stuff, no need to mention it. But our primary focus, once we're 100% finished with the other little things we need to take care of, is our engine pods. And you can see we've got them outlined here where the sheeting is going to be removed. So do take the time to go ahead, stay tuned, tune back in, because guess what? More to come.